the most sacred of relationships, yet time and life make it fragile. Love, trust, respect and desire, all elements of a successful marriage. Yet so many of us along the way forget. We lead busy lives. We go through changes, big and small. We build walls to protect ourselves. It does not have to be this way. There are clear and exciting ways to bring your marriage and life back on track. Welcome to the Couples Expert Podcast with Stuart Fensterheim. Hi there, and welcome to this episode of The Couples Expert. This episode is brought to you by the Annual Relationship Survey. You really do need to know how your relationship is doing and ways to improve your connection. Welcome again to this episode of The Couples Expert Podcast. My story that I like to tell has to do with me being a couples counselor and also having to be a man who has been in a marriage that was unsuccessful. I am divorced. I am now remarried though to the love of my life, but it hasn't always been this way. It hasn't always been in which I believe that my partner is truly there for me. In my previous marriages, let me tell you a little bit about what that composition was. I was a partner, I was a husband, I was a step-parent, I was a parent, and now as I sit here, remarried, a divorced father of two daughters. I think that I likely have the expertise to talk about this topic. How do we deal with the ex's family when you are divorced? In addition to all of the things I just mentioned, I'm also a child of a divorce. So I understand the pain and anguish that goes into a divorce. Divorce is really, really hard. The pain of a marriage not working out is excruciatingly painful. Some of you know that I recently lost my father. He was 91 years old, and I'm currently still mourning his death. And when I think about that fact, the mourning and the grieving that I'm doing currently, it is the only thing that I've experienced in my life maybe a little bit more painful than when I went through my divorce. The pain of that for this couple's counselor is that I believe very strongly divorce can be outlawed in our world, that you don't have to get a divorce. In what we now know about all the research of how to have a connected relationship and how to have a relationship with your partner, where you truly are best friends and truly are partners working together to solve the problems of your family, your marriage, the happiness, the stresses of life. And if we're not doing it alone, if we're doing it with our best ally, the man or woman across the room from you, life can be exhilarating. And when you look into the eyes of your children, if you have children, you see the glimmer and the hope of having a stable, loving environment. But what happens if your marriage just isn't that way, or one or both of you give up? When you look into the eyes of your children then, you need to be able to say that you have done every single thing possible to salvage the relationship. And if you can't keep your family together, that you've done your part. And to be able to say to them, their life would be better not having the kind of pain and anguish that comes from an unhappy relationship. Divorce has an incredibly negative consequence for children. Their life is turned upside down, along with the two of you. No one's life feels stable and no one feels at peace. How we as adults handle this is paramount to whether or not our children 
have long-standing problems as a result of what we've chosen. Lots of people talk about the trauma of the family, but once the family is dissolved, the question really is, how do we handle all the other relationships? When you have a child, how do you or do you also sever ties with your ex's families? That's really the question that we're going to tackle today on this episode of the Couples Expert podcast. So really the question now is, we all know that a divorce will separate a couple, but doesn't necessarily have to extend to the members of the other families. And this can lead to a really tricky situation. What do you do when your family has a very strong connection to your now ex, your former spouse? Or what do you do with the emotions that you might have about your in-laws? There are many couples that I see in my practice that when I talk to them about their in-laws, they talk about it being the best relationships in their life, that they didn't have a good relationship with their mother or their father, or that there was abuse or neglect, and that in their marriage, they have found in their in-laws the father they never had or the mother they never had. And now the marriage is dissolving. And what do you do then? If you're the spouse of the person who is divorcing you, the horror of that disconnection is tremendous. My hope would be that the two of you would be able to maintain a relationship, but is it really possible? Can you really have a relationship with your now ex-in-laws, particularly if you and your partner don't get along well? There are lots of jealousies that I've seen created. I remember a story of what ended up happening in the relationship is he had an affair. So there was tremendous betrayal, tremendous anger. And the two of them ended up splitting up. But his relationship with her family was really, really close. His in-law, his father-in-law and he used to go golfing together. They would go out almost every week and they would talk about the family and they talk about business and they became almost what I would call best friends. Now what do they do? Do the two of them just stop having those emotional connection as friends, as colleagues, as people who would talk about their life together? Can they maintain that relationship without the father-in-law's child, his wife, who's divorcing him because he had an affair, would she feel betrayed by her own father? And can the father maintain a relationship with him in spite of how his daughter might feel? This is the kind of pain and anguish that divorce can bring. It is not always necessary to sever ties, but it is necessary to have a dialogue with your family about what your expectation of them are. And my hope would be that maintaining a connection from a positive manner to where people can maintain those relationships and have a relationship that then is open to a new feelings of love. What is so difficult about this, obviously, is what happens when his daughter has someone new in her life. My thoughts are generally those types of relationships don't continue. 
because it is really, really difficult. But what we're going to be talking about later is what about the children? In divorce, you don't only lose a partner, you lose an entire side of your family. The old way of doing things was to declare war. But what we now know, what is so very important, is that if we're trying to find stable families, environments where people can sever ties emotionally, two people who are in a marriage no longer able to be together, you don't have to lose all the other relationships, particularly when there are children. And what's really good about this is technology helps. We can stay in touch with our ex-in-laws if we're a member of a couple and don't have to maintain a relationship if you don't have children interpersonally, face-to-face, -face, you can maintain some relationships such as we do with others in social media. Geographical difference don't get in the way. The issue here is about loyalty. And what is absolutely essential here is having a dialogue with the couple, with the people who are getting divorced to find out what they can handle. Handling the issue is paramount. It involves clear dialogue, clear communication, deep understanding, vulnerability. If you think about it, all of these elements generally aren't there when people are getting divorced. That's why a lot of these relationships don't stay healthy. What we're going to talk about, though, is how do you maintain that when there are children? But one of the ways to maintain a connection with ex-in-laws is to create a schedule, create a way for people to connect when the partner's not involved. What we want to do is have those relationships be ones that people can have in spite of the legal status of the marriage. Staying too close to your in-laws, though, can be counterproductive. And I think the problems are maintained, obviously, because of the loyalty that we talked about. What we want to do is encourage ongoing relationships with all members of the family and that two people who decide that they can't stay together can handle this in a mature fashion. That fashion being respecting the needs of every single person that you had a relationship. One of the things that my ex-wife and I did so well is we were able to sever our ties without creating for others that we were in relationships with, including friends and other family members, that maintained that relationship, that my brother-in-law and I were able to really meet each other on different types of social settings and still feel good about our relationship, still be able to have a relationship. What that took was my ex-wife sending the message that it was okay with her if that occurred. That takes maturity. That takes a knowledge that, particularly if you have children, you want the children to see the family as having some stability and structure that is about healthy positiveness. There's enough negativity that comes with divorce. The best relationships that help divorce are the grandparents. Grandparents have a very powerful ability to help children tolerate the destruction of the family unit. And I'm going to go and move into that in this last segment. But first, I would like to sort of introduce our sponsor, the sponsor of this episode, which is the Relationship Checkup. When is the last time you took a relationship checkup? 
Sure, we get our vehicle serviced, have maintenance done on our homes, and see our local doctor to make sure our bodies are in good working order. But sadly, we tend to neglect one of the most important things in our lives, the health of our relationship. You get mammograms, you get a prostate check, but do you check your relationship? Most of us don't. The relationship checkup and assessment will provide you with a comprehensive information about the level of satisfaction you have with your partner, how deep the emotional connection is, how strong your trust and commitment is, and whether or not you deal with conflict well. The best part is you don't have to do it alone. The couples expert will provide you with a 30-minute consultation to help you feel really strong and empowered to do all that you can because you take the ownership of your relationship by the two of you working together and taking the annual survey. For merely the cost of dinner and a movie, you can set yourself on the road to a fulfilling and fabulous relationship that will last a lifetime. Go to www.thecouplesexperts.com and sign up today to register for your relationship checkup. Now back to the episode. The impact of the grandparents maintaining the relationship with your children is critical. And my belief as a couples expert, and as someone who's been in both a marriage that works, a marriage that doesn't, a child of a divorce, if you can maintain this relationship, it is essential and will help your child so tremendously. But the question that comes up a lot is how? Why is it worth all the pain and anguish that may come from me trying to maintain that relationship? So what are the reasons that it's valuable? One is it maintains that contact, the contact that your child will have with your ex's in-laws will allow a feeling of stability that your children need. Grandparents can be very intuitive when it comes to realizing what children need. And what they need more than anything is emotional support. Not from the two of you, because mom and dad are not in a place right then to really give kids what they want, because what happens for children, even if you do the best job you can, there's a feeling of needing to pick a side. When they're with their grandma and grandpa, that's not as strong. And the sense of belonging and having a connection with their past, with when the marriage was doing well, helps them feel at peace. Grandparents and other relatives may not always be on the page as you are with your divorce. So you may need to have some conversations with them about that. But for most grandparents, what I have found is they are more nervous about this divorce and losing the ability to have a close relationship with their grandchild, that they're very careful about how they handle that. They want that close relationship. They want a relationship with both spouses, with their child and their child's ex-husband or ex-wife, so that there can be a continuation of the time and energy that they want to put into the, having a relationship with their grandchild. When that happens, when that relationship continues, grandparents can be very important people to your children. They can be vital to their emotional well-being. This bond is really special because we want our kids to be spoiled by their grandparents. We want that. Kids need that. Remember something. You divorced your ex. You didn't divorce the grandparents. Grandparents can be dysfunctional, though. We talked a little bit about that a minute ago. But for most grandparents, their love of the child is unconditional. And it's very close to parental love. 
and very close to them understanding what their children need more than anything is a strong foundation of love and that they have all the people that are important to them still going to be involved in their life. So do everything you can to encourage and maintain that relationship between your children and their grandparents. Not only do your kids need this unconditional love, but grandparents really can help children feel much more comfortable. And what tends to happen is kids then talk to them. And the grandparents can be an ear that they don't have anywhere else. An adult, not a therapist, but an adult in their life that they can share their feelings and reduce the trauma of the divorce. Maintaining this positive relationship is one of the more constant things that kids need when divorce is happening. And if you happen to be a single mom, the divorce just occurred recently, no one is in a relationship yet, kids can get the positive role model with grandma and grandpa, not all marriages fail. There are people in this world that can stay together for a long time, for a lifetime, even if their parents did not. And their perspective of marriage doesn't go from marriage is forever to marriage doesn't last. The other thing that can occur with grandparents' involvement is they can help financially. Grandparents can take the kids shopping or go for school clothes or treat them to a movie or a lunch or even take them on a vacation. How wonderful would that be, particularly if your financial resources are now limited because of all the legal bills and all the things that have changed in the financial makeup of the family? To have both grandparents involved to give the kids some of the things that they need that just helps them get through this really difficult time. We also sometimes need a place to have the kids go after school or someone to pick them up. Your ex's parents maybe can be that for you. And having a relationship in which the grandparents and you are able to maintain this relationship will allow all the future happy times in their life, the kids' choir concerts, the kids graduating high school, the kids getting married, all of these things that typically have families coming in and celebrating together doesn't feel so awkward and doesn't feel so despairingly for everyone involved. We want relationships with the grandparents, with the uncles, with the cousins, all to maintain that relationship. It is a basic ingredient that kids need all this love from all the people in their family, and their family doesn't change. They now have going from one family to two families. Let's let all the families be something for your children that will help them feel that this world is about people loving each other. And when people aren't able to stay together, which is such a sad thing, that the, all the adults in their lives act as mature individuals, recognizing what's so very important is people being able to bounce back from that having people in their life love them without needing to be negative about their mom or their dad. Because what I will tell you is there's nothing more horrible than children feeling that their parents are more invested in their anger and being upset with one another than giving the children the love that they need to have as stable, as normal life as possible in spite of the family breakup. If you keep this in mind, you will have 
your divorce be one of those things that the bounce back from that are children having minimal impacts and you and your ex being able to then branch out having new partners and bringing into your family with your children the love that all of us need that can then have your children say I didn't like my parents getting divorced but my family was filled with love and my stepdad or stepmom were people in my life that I was able to have a positive relationship with because nobody turned their back on the family being one that love was a central theme there take care and we'll talk to you next time bye bye thank you for listening this episode has ended but your journey continues head over to www.thecouplesexperts.com to access all the links and resources mentioned in this episode as well as bonus content exclusive to podcast listeners enjoyed this episode why not hit subscribe now and never miss an episode 